how much of what we've come to understand as good or bad behavior is just social and cultural conditioning. And this is half the battle with neurodivergent families. Going out into public and our children having a moment or even us having a moment where we need a break or we need to step out or we can feel that we're going to have a meltdown. I don't know what it feels like for you, but I can feel a meltdown building for a while. And for me, I know that if I don't remove myself from the situation, it will happen. And it's like having an out of body experience. I can't guarantee my behavior. I can't guarantee what's going to come out of my mouth. I can't guarantee what I'm going to do with my body. And I'm a 41 year old woman. So I've had a while to work out that when I need to get out of there, I need to get out of there. And, you know, I have a toolkit. Children don't have that. They're not afforded the right to autonomy either. Sometimes the children are going to be in a situation where other adults are not going to allow them to employ or implement tools that they need to, to be okay because their reference point for understanding behavior is aligned with predominant neurotypes, which is a child who yells and screams and thrashes about on the floor is having a tantrum or is <clears throat> being a brat. I don't believe there is such a thing. I don't believe there is such a thing in a neurodivergent child or a non-neurodivergent child.